Hey guys, it's Sophie. Welcome back. Um, it's been a long time since I've done a sitting down video. Firstly, sorry if there's like background noise of like water and like wind and like whatever, but like I'm in the Philippines and like that's what happens here. So sorry about that. Um, but today I want to share a story time with you. Um, about the time I got dengue fever and I was in the hospital in the Philippines. Okay, so basically how it all started, we, me and Armin and Emily, we were cleaning, uh, and Gerald and like some other people, we were cleaning out the bodega, which is like this big storage room that we have where we keep all the donations. Um, and it hadn't been cleaned out for a long time, so it was a mess. Um, and so we started in the morning and it was all good, and then it got to lunch and I had like completely lost my appetite. I was like not hungry and I felt, I had a headache and I just felt really like weak and like sick. So after I ate, I went and laid on my bed and I was like, I don't really have the energy to like finish cleaning this. But anyway, I got up, I went down there and like we started cleaning and I was like, I can't do this. Like I feel sick. Um, and I was like really like slow. I like what we were doing. And then like I left, I left once and I went to the toilet, just like breathe. And then I came back and then I was like sitting there and I wasn't of any help because I just couldn't do anything. Like I just felt really sick. Um, and like everyone was saying like it was really hot, but like I was not hot at all. And at that point I was like, something is wrong. So I went back to my room and I sat there and I just felt like something had just come over me. Like something had hit me like a truck. And I was like, I need to sleep. And first I thought like I had overdone myself because the other day, like the day before, we had done like all this cleaning stuff and I worked out and like that day I had worked out and then we were cleaning again. So I just thought I was really tight. So I took a shower and when I showered I like felt weird. Like my skin felt like cold but hot and it was so weird and like I was shivering. But like it's hot in the Philippines. Like it is hot and my room was boiling hot but it felt like good that it was warm because like I was cold and it was just weird. Anyway, I laid on my bed and like I fell asleep for a bit. Then, and then that, like I didn't leave my room that night. Um, Armin bought me food to eat and then we watched a movie like with some other people in my room. And the whole time I was like hot. And then it was like 12 o'clock when they all left and I checked my temperature and I had a fever. I had a temperature of like 38.3 or something or 38.6. Um, and so I was like, okay, well this isn't right. So anyway, I went to sleep assuming that when I woke up in the morning, I would feel better. But I didn't, um, I felt worse. Um, and that's when I basically isolated myself and I was like I'm not gonna leave my room because maybe like I've been infected with something you know the cold coronavirus things happening so I can't tell people I have a fever because then they're gonna be stressed out even though I'm pretty sure I already had coronavirus but anyways that's another story um, which is not that exciting this is more exciting nothing really improved on Saturday I had a fever I had a headache my body was sore um, and like all of those symptoms were like corona symptoms so i was like a little bit like worried but i was like surely my body's just sore from like working out or like working too hard and i have a headache from just like everything happening and whatever anyway sunday came and nothing had changed i was still sick i still had a fever and i was like what is going on so anyway i messaged some of the leaders here like older people like who are like parents and like a nurse and whatever and I was like, I feel like I need to go like see a doctor because this doesn't seem okay. And they were all like, that's not a good idea with the whole coronavirus thing happening. Like everyone's automatically gonna think you have coronavirus. Um, and so they're gonna isolate you for like 14 days, whatever. And so my mom was the first one who was like, you need to go see someone. So I, then I told her this and she was like, okay, that makes sense. Maybe just like stay where you are, like take Panadol, rest and like you'll be fine. So anyway, I also tell myself that, that I would be fine. And then, so then someone gave me antibiotics to take. Oh my gosh, I feel like it just gets worse from here. <laughs> so I started taking these antibiotics, um, which was for a bacterial infection, which I had a feeling I didn't have because there was no like, um, like I wasn't really coughing or anything. Um, and it was just like, I don't know. Anyways, so I took that and then my, Skin started getting super itchy my face was red um, and my neck was like I had like a bit of a rash here that was red and like I was so itchy everywhere I couldn't sleep oh my gosh it was just like it was painful like 
I was like, can this be over already? Anyways, so Tuesday, uh, Monday, I felt a little bit better because I had been taking Panadol every six hours, so like all the pain was just being numbed. Um, but um, yeah, I woke up on Tuesday and then I was like, okay, I still have a fever. Um, I still don't feel that great. Um, something needs to happen. So my mum was like, you need to go see a doctor. You need to get a test for Corona. If like, if you have to do it, then do it. So um, yeah, I went to. So first, Armin took me to like a clinic instead of like a hospital because in the Philippines, if you want to go see like a doctor, you basically just go to the emergency room, um, which is weird. But anyway, that's what happens here. So we went to a clinic, but they wouldn't let me in because they had a fever. So we had to go to an emergency room. Um, and we were there for a few hours. I was like in this one room and Armin was like somewhere else. So like I didn't have anyone to talk to the whole time. They checked my blood. They checked, they did an x-ray on my chest. Um, they did a urine sample and then they came back and they were like, we think you have dengue fever because your blood platelets are way too low and we want to admit you in the hospital. And I was like, what? You want to admit me in a Filipino hospital right now? <laughs> I was like, I was sitting there like, what the heck do I do? I have no family here. Armin is the only one here who's not even in this room with me. And I was like, okay, wait, I need to think about this first. Um, and he was like, if you like want, you can go home. Like we can send you back home and we'll just give you some medicine. And I was like, oh, okay, let's do that then. So I was like, all right, can we do that? Like what medicine is that? And he's like, oh, it's just Panadol. And I was like, just Panadol. That's what I've been taking this whole time and nothing's improved. I didn't say that, that was just in my head. And he was like, but we really recommend that you be admitted so that we can like monitor you and make sure things like improve or like whatever. So I said, okay, can I just talk to Armin about it? So Armin came in and then he was like, he looked at me and he was like, you do not look good. Like my legs were purple. So I had like this rash thing going on. Um, and like I was so tired and weak um, and he was like I'm not leaving this hospital without you like being in middle like I'm not taking you back to this place to like where we stay um, and I was like <laughs> okay so I have no choice um, and then I messaged my mom and she was like yeah you need to be admitted if they say that then like be admitted you need to get better anyway then this doctor or this nurse whatever he was like the only problem is there's no rooms at this hospital so you're gonna have to be like you can either sit, stay in this room for like the next three days, which like this room was like outside. It was like in a tent. He was like, so you can either wait here for like three days or like put your name on a waiting list and whenever there's a room available, then we can put you in there. So first I was like, wait here for three days? Is that a joke? I'm not waiting here for three days. Um, so then he was like, there's other options. You can like go and check this other hospital. Sorry, this story is so long, but basically then we like called not called um, our director here and he was like, you're not going to that hospital. We're going to take you to like a legit like good hospital where like foreigners go, like where I take my own children um, and it's like more expensive. But anyways, whatever. So I was like, whatever. Okay. So we came back here and like packed my stuff, assuming that I would like be admitted somewhere. Um, and then the journey of finding a hospital began. We went to 10 hospitals um, and they basically, the first one, which was like the one we had planned to go to, it looked like a hotel from the outside, like it was legit, like a legit hospital. Um, but they were like, you need to have a swab test first because you have corona-like symptoms. Um, even though we had given them like referral letters basically saying they have dengue fever. But anyway, they wanted me to get a swab test, which would take three to five days. So I'd have to go back here anyway and then wait three to five days. Probably be dead by then because I was feeling like absolute crap at this point. Like I felt like I was about to like fall on the floor and die. Um, anyways, so we were like, all right, let's go to another hospital. So we went to nine other hospitals. Um, 
good hospitals, bad hospitals, great hospitals, and yeah, they basically all the ones that were taking corona people with corona symptoms were full, um, and then others were just like not accepting me. Basically, everything was full, like they just weren't taking anyone. So, our last op option was a public hospital. Public hospital in the Philippines is something that you have probably never seen before if you have not been to a third world country or just haven't. Anyway, we don't have anything like this in Australia. So, um, yeah, we got there and they were also like, we don't have any rooms, like there's no rooms for you, but you can sit outside. And they had like two tents and then some other people sitting outside, you know, they have IVs in their arms, they've got like oxygen going into them, like they're sitting outside on like camper chairs and like chairs and like these weird like tiny as hospital beds so they're like you can sit out here and anyway I was so like tired and weak and exhausted at this point that I just didn't say anything I was like whatever and Armin and this other nurse Rona um, they were like yeah this is the best option you need to stay here um, and so that's what happened that night I cried a lot they put an IV into my arm they took my blood twice and there was a lot of tears um, and it wasn't the fact that like I was at this hospital, it was the fact that I had to sleep outside. Um, and yeah, it was just like, oh my gosh. Um, anyway, so that night, yeah, they took my blood and I was sitting, I was just sitting in like a normal like plastic chair. Just a normal plastic chair. <laughs> Um, and anyway, so I had an I okay, this is another story. So I had an IV in my arm, obviously, well, like in here. So I was sitting there for a while, just like trying to calm myself because I'd been crying so long. Um, I was just like tied like emotionally tired and like physically tired that like tears just come naturally yeah so I was sitting there and then all of a sudden like something just came over me again and like I could I couldn't breathe properly and I felt sick in my stomach um and like I was like trying to breathe like trying to control my breathing but like I just couldn't and I just felt like there was nothing going into me so I was like I'm an I'm an baby, baby. like something's happening like I don't feel good and he was like um can you are you like struggling to breathe or can you breathe properly? I was like, no, I can't breathe properly. So anyway, he called the nurse to come over. And like at this point, I was like this. And like Armin was like trying to like keep me awake. <laughs> and I was like, what the heck is going on with me? Am I about to die? So like everyone's like staring at me and I'm like this. Like it was it was a weird experience. Like the like nurse comes over and he like fixes my um IV thing to like make me take in more water or whatever, whatever this thing is. Anyway, so I started to feel better um, and then Armin's brother Arnold came and like brought this like camper chair thing to sit on and like sleep on, they like kind of like go back. Um, so yeah, I laid on that that night and Armin sat on a chair, he stayed with me the whole time. What a legend because that would have been extremely uncomfortable but you know, Filipinos can sleep anywhere so yeah. <laughs> Anyways, next day. I was still outside the hospital, like just sitting out there. Um, and then they came and checked my blood pressure and it was really low. My blood pressure is usually low, but like it was like really low, like something over 60 or like 40 over 60 or something. And they thought I was gonna pass out. So they gave me like, they that that first night I was there, someone died, like literally right next to us. Like I turned around, I saw him like going this. <gasps> And then I like turned back around because I did not want to witness that. And then like five minutes later they were like, alright, he's dead. So they like rolled him out and every time we went to the toilet, we like I couldn't go inside because I had like oh, also by the way, they tested if I they did a rapid test to see if I was positive for Karina. It came back positive. But I think that's because I've already had it. Um so they weren't really concerned about that, but I wasn't allowed to go inside to go to the toilet because of that. So I had to go the back way to go to the toilet every time and every time we passed this dead body. Anyway, this second day that I was at the hospital, my blood pressure was really low. So they wheeled this bed around that they had just taken the dead body off um, and I had to lay on this bed with my feet in the air 
so I get the blood back to my heart or whatever. I don't even know what's happening. But basically, because they thought I was gonna faint, so I had to like do this or whatever. So yeah, that happened. Um, and then that night I got to stay on that bed and sleep on that bed, and Armin laid on the floor, and then he like sat on this the camper chair that we had. Um, and yeah. Then the next day, um, in the morning, they um, took me inside, like just inside the emergency door, like in the hallway a little bit and they let me stay there on the bed and this older guy was like sitting in front of me like not really in control of himself um he was kind of like all over the place so they took the bed off me and let him sit on it and then they told me to go and stay in the non-infectious room even though i was came back positive with corona so not sure what the go is there but anyway they put me in the non-infectious room and i sat on the camper chair again um anyway that day was fine like i was feeling good at this point like i felt good the only thing was like every 12 hours they would check my blood to check my blood platelets um because they were what was really low but the problem was they would go up and then they would come back down and then they'd go up and down and i was like they weren't stable so i couldn't leave the hospital yet but i felt fine and my fever was gone i was just really weak so every time i needed to go somewhere i needed to hold on to someone um, and I couldn't really like change my clothes without someone helping me because of my IV in my hand. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, it's a little bit of an ish. Um, so that night, um, someone else died in the non-infectious room. So um, they put me on that bed. They put me on like a bigger, like legit hospital bed um, instead of the camper chair, so that Armin could also sleep on the. Um, bed with me because it was really big um, So yeah, I slept much better that night because I could actually sleep and then The next day I was still stuck there because my blood platelets were still like not stable like it would go like so our, our blood platelets are meant to be between 150 and like 350 or 450 or something and mine were like ranging from like um 120 and then 97 and then like 134 and then like 110 and it was just like what the heck's going on fourth night things were like looking better um and they were like you can you should be able to go home tomorrow we'll just do like a final blood test tomorrow um because your blood platelets are increasing so yay things were looking better um and then yeah last day came and they did my blood test um, at like lunchtime, and also to get my blood platelets up I had no idea what to do other than like eat egg drink like three to four liters of water a day and drink tawa tawa which is something like Filipino like um, mysterious plant thing that like is good for you whatever anyways so yeah and it was like one or two o'clock I um, went to go check my blood platelet um, results and they were 149, which meant I could leave because they could see that like things were going better. So yeah, that was basically like <laughs> the hospital story. So I spent two nights outside the hospital and then two nights inside the hospital in the non-infectious room, even though I was positive with Corona. Um, which like I don't believe I am I just think that I now have the antibodies for corona because like a few months ago we like had this whole stitch here and like we're all pretty sure we got corona but like we're not really sure maybe I just have antibodies for corona or maybe it was just a false positive who knows anyway so the last day came and then yeah so I got my results back and then they said I could leave so they like did this whole discharge thing um and at this point I still had like rashes on my legs like I had these like lots of like dots on my legs but they weren't purple anymore um, but the nurse said that that's normal with dengue you just need to like rest when you go home and drink lots of water and then we'd have like a follow-up checkup whatever in one week so anyways um, yeah that's basically the story then I came back home um, I didn't have any like fever or anything um, even like without the IV or without like any medicine I was just taking vitamins um and I just like slowly got back into life like slowly like starting to like walk around a bit more and eat more um 
and like get back more into my routine because that really took me out of my routine and then one week went and uh, that one week I was meant to go to my checkup yesterday um, so we went to the hospital and we took a cake to say thank you to like the nurses and doctors and then they told us the place to get a checkup is in a different hospital uh, so we didn't go because like I feel fine now like I'm all G um, I like I feel like I'm back to my normal self I just can't get dengue again otherwise it could be really bad um, so let's pray that I don't get it again and yeah that's basically the story um, I had a lot of people trying to find me another hospital to go to someone one of the nurses here at Maruna she called 42 hospitals to see if they could admit me there instead of me sleeping outside um, but they were all full um, I even had my intern pastor from my church in Australia contact people from the Philippines that he knows to get me a bed in a hospital but they called me and said that they don't have any way of doing that um, so yeah it was just like a lot that just happened and I, it was a little bit stressful but you know what this um, public hospital whilst it's facilities weren't um, top-notch which like you don't expect with a public hospital they still helped me to recover and I'm like good now and they were really cheap so yay <laughs> and they're really lovely people when I went back yesterday they like said hi to me and they're like oh hi Sophie are you feeling better now and I was like yeah I'm good now thanks so much um they didn't speak like that like they're Filipino so you know they speak in Filipino Anyways, that's basically the story of how I got dengue fever in the Philippines and then I was admitted to outside of the hospital and then inside and then yeah So yeah, that's the story. Yeah, thanks so much to those people that looked after me That drove places for me that bought stuff for me. I had lots of people bring food for me and like fruits and People bought me McDonald's even though I couldn't eat that or drink coke um People that made me Pawatawa, Emily who like came and visit me every day, Alman that stayed with me the whole time, people who prayed for me, the doctors and nurses, you all are legends. So thank you so much for sticking by me. Thanks for everyone who watched this video. Um, continue to pray for me that I don't get sick again because that might stress my mom out a little bit too much. Um, but yeah, I'm still living here in the Philippines, um, hopefully going home for Christmas. Um, depending on these corona situations and like if I can come back or not, who knows, only God knows, so yeah everyone, keep trusting God, he has the best plan for you and for us and for all of us and he's the only one that we can put our hope in because he's the only one that guarantees eternal life and I'm excited to go there and I almost wish that that's what happened when I got dengue and I died and went to heaven. But that didn't happen. I'm still here, so I'm gonna live my life for God, knowing that He's the one that I'm here for. So, I hope you all do that too. Have a blessed week and day and night and morning, whatever time it is for you guys. Love you all so much. Um, peace out. And what's the end of my thing? Thanks for watching my YouTube channel. And subscribe and bye! See you next time! <laughs>